Hey guys, how's it going? Jason's here. Our topic today is how to integrate SRS PBX and TE Gateway. Now, here's a quick question. What is a TE Gateway? TE Gateway can actually expand ports for PBX to connect more PRI lines, making and receiving calls by these lines. We can integrate a gateway and a PBX by local network environment, the internet, and VPN. Basically, once we ensure both devices are accessible to each other, then the integration will be realized by SIP trunking. So the only thing left is just figuring out the call routing. Alright, let's check it out. Taking this scenario as an example, S300 and T100 have been deployed in the same local network environment. Both devices are assigned a specific private IP. So they are accessible to each other. Now our job is quite simple. Create a peer trunk between them directly. On the PBX side, add a new peer trunk to access the TE gateway. Enter TE100's private IP, save and apply the configuration. Don't forget to check the registration status and confirm the connection. Then, we turn to the TE gateway side. Go click on gateway, create a trunk. Here we have three options, account, trunk, and service provider. They will apply to different scenarios. We're integrating a service PBX and a gateway via the internet. If a static public IP or DDNS service is available for the gateway, yet unavailable for the PBX, we can open an account on the gateway for the PBX registration in the account mode. If a static public IP or DDNS service is only available for PBX, we can open an account on the PBX and register the gateway to the PBX in trunk mode. If a static public IP or DDNS service is available for both devices, we can choose the service provider mode. Besides, the last mode can also be applied to the example scenario in the local network environment. So, we simply enter the private IP of PBX. And don't forget to check the connection status. Make sure it has been activated. Now, two facilities have been connected. Before we wrote calls between, we're supposed to configure the PRI trunk connected to TE100 to make it work. Find the trunk and edit all general parameters right according to the trunk provider's requirement, so it can obtain normal service from the service provider. As we know, an E1 line can provide up to 30 DID numbers when using the E1 trunk with our telephone system. Each DID number can be bound with an internal extension directly. So the external cutter can dial the DID number directly to reach the specific extension. Say we've applied for three DID numbers from the service provider, and they're bound with three extensions respectively. When an external party calls 550-3301, he'll be directed to the extension 1001. Conversely, if extension 1001 calls to an external number, the caller ID displayed to the called party will be 550-3301, as same as the DID number. Yet we call its DOD number, direct outward number. In the trunk settings, bind the three DOD numbers with the three extensions of the PBX. Then, we need to configure the routing. If we want to allow extension users of the PBX making outgoing calls through the E1 trunk connected to the gateway, firstly, we need an outbound road for the peer trunk we've created on the PBX. And don't forget to select all of our extensions. Now, all outgoing calls from the PBX will be sent to the gateway. The next step, turn to the gateway. Create an inbound route to direct calls from PBX to an E1 trunk. Find route list and add a new route. Enable the simple mode. We will allow all incoming calls from PBX to be sent out through the E1 trunk. However, we will see the advanced settings when the simple mode is disabled. For most of our cases, it's designed for limiting incoming calls from PBX or creating a more complicated route. Normally, the simple mode is enough for the basic daily communication. We simply choose yes to allow all calls. In call comes in from, 
choose the VoIP trunk we've created. In Send Call Through, choose E1 trunk. Save and apply all configurations. Now, all outgoing calls from the PBX will be sent out through the E1 line available. Conversely, if we want to have incoming calls to the E1 line reach specific extensions of the PBX, just route calls from the gateway to the PBX. Add a route on TE100. Calls from the E1 line will be sent through the VoIP trunk to the PBX. By the configuration, all incoming calls from the E1 trunk will be routed to the PBX. Now we jump in the PBX. Create an inbound route, set the DID number of the E1 trunk. Select the peer trunk and set the destination to the extension range. Save and apply all the configurations as usual. Now, external callers call to the 3 DID number will be connected to the three extension users respectively. Alright, it seems that we have a complete system to handle calls between our PBX and Gateway. Just have a test. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button if you're not already. Check our online documents if you need more detailed information. And I will see you guys in the next one.